Welcome to the Parent You Podcast, where we want to frame the challenges of the teenage years for parents to see these years as a great work of sanctification in their lives and have a deeper understanding of each other, and most importantly, grow together in the grace of Jesus Christ. I'm Mark Long, and five years ago, I approached the leadership at Oak Mountain Presbyterian Church in Birmingham, Alabama, about a calling to pursue the hearts of parents and families with teenagers and to equip them to be proactive rather than reactive in their parenting. You know, one of the reasons um, I wanted to talk to our guest today was because his heart for youth ministry. Um, I believe he and I have very similar uh, desires when it comes to working with students and their families. I'd, I'd shared earlier that the reason I pursued an, a Master's of Divinity was to legitimize youth ministry. Because I had been told, believe it or not, by a, an elder at, at a presbytery meeting that he didn't believe a youth pastor was a legitimate calling. He, he said it to my face. But uh, there was another gentleman standing there, and he took up for me. He, he begged to differ and started talking to the gentleman because, you know, we all were called to, to minister. And then with, you know, the statistics that you and I know so well that the majority, I mean, vast majority of people who come to know Christ become a Christian, do it before the age of 18. So the church should invest in youth ministry. So what happened? Different groups popped up because God said, I want, I want my, the teenagers to be reached out to. So the church started paying attention and it's particularly in PCA circles, started working with some men that wanted to legitimize youth ministry and see that it was a legitimate call. So Today we've got Braxton Baker with us. He's the youth director here at Oak Mountain Presbyterian Church. And so, Braxton, thank you for coming out. Um, one of the things I want to ask you about is what got you started, motivated to work in youth ministry? So I got asked to be a counselor at a youth ministry retreat weekend and fell in love with what I was doing. And it wasn't something I, I would have told you all through college that I wanted to be involved with youth ministry because of the role youth ministry had on my life as a student. But at that, I began to feel God call me of, you know, maybe this is more than just something that I'm passionate about uh, just as a volunteer. Maybe that's something more than that. I began to realize my interest and burden for students was unusual uh, uh, when I looked around at my peers and, and found um, affirmation in my brothers in Christ that, that as I began to continue to see God use me inside of youth ministry, it began to say, wow, why would I... Why would I do anything else? I think youth ministry, you get a very unique opportunity in the most formative years of a human being's life, right? Our students aren't in a vacuum of youth ministry. Our future elders, deacons, women shepherds are our current youth. Our future husbands, our future, fa our future fathers, mothers, the leaders of our churches in 20 years are currently in youth. And if 70 plus percent of them will come to Christ before the age of 18, then we've got a critical window that we can't miss. So when you talk about being part of uh, God changing students' lives, what all is involved with that? What, what, what is involved to change students' lives? You know, I think there's a number of things. Obviously, it's the power of the gospel that changed lives through the word of Christ, but also through the community of Christ. You know, it's one thing to tell a student about the new creation, the new birth, right? It's another thing for them to hear the gospel and witness the, the power of transformative grace in a peer's life. I think, you know, it, this is humbling, but the older I get, I see now my role way more as raising up disciple makers who influence their peers for Christ. I'm now at a stage in youth ministry where I'm seeing students come to Christ less through my direct ministry and more indirectly, less through my personal sharing of the gospel with them, and more so through them seeing the gospel lived out among their peers. So seeing our students be used to impact other students for Christ, now that's way more my role. Another question I had for you was, what role does the youth ministry have in 
um, supporting families. You know, you said that the majority of students come to Christ before the age of 18. And the majority influence on their life is their mom and dad, right? Their mom, dad, their siblings, their family structure. So one of the humbling things about being in youth ministry for 13 plus years now is realizing I'm in a very reactive spot, right? Uh, I'm entering, entering their lives at a point in time, long which after they're born, long after a lot of formation has already taken place. But one of the best parts about being in youth ministry is being able to see the effect parents have on their kids. If I had lunch with one student every day of the year, one-on-one, then I would essentially see one of our students a year. I, you know, There's no way that one influence relationally can have the impact that a family. But if we impact families and we come alongside families and we complement families, that really is God's chosen place primarily outside of obviously the church, but spiritual formation comes through the home. It's really difficult in the thick. You know, I, as a youth minister, I'm around teens. As a parent, I'm around my oldest is eight, my second is five, then a three-year-old and a seven-month-old. So I'm very much in the thick of it's easy to talk only about behavior modification because I desperately want their behavior to be modified, right? I don't want Sarah Grace throwing food at Knox across the kitchen table. So it gets really difficult as the years pass. I see a blink and a year's passed. And I even ask myself this now, when was the last time I engaged the heart of my son, the heart of my daughter? And all of a sudden we see students hit a youth age where they're getting things offered to them. They're, they're having temptations that are unique from childhood. And now you see parents on the reactive side thinking, I, I, now I want to engage with the heart of my son or daughter. And not that it's too late. It's never too late, right? Again, back to the thief on the cross. It's never too late. But we've missed a critical window if we're not engaging with the hearts of our kids. So if we don't come alongside families, youth ministry can't undo what's happening inside the home. And by God's grace, we do see God transform people from broken, ungodly homes. We've, we've seen countless kids come to Christ, but we also know that God has chosen the family to be the primary means of discipleship that, that, that God uses in the lives of believers. Um, what were some practical things that parents can do in discipling their kids? I think we all want to have this sit across the table, son, daughter, let's read Romans together <laughs> and take scrupulous notes and share prayer requests. And sometimes that's really difficult. So I, I've seen some fathers do this with hunting of there's not necessarily an interest in hunting, but I'm trying to find an activity that I engage with, with my son, with trying to be you know, I hate to use the word sneaky, but somewhat sneaky in the, the, I'm finding this interest that my son likes and I want to use, it could be going to, I, I think that's the beauty. I, I know, obviously we talk about college football, you know, and how, you know, it can absolutely be an idol, but can it also be an awesome opportunity of, uh, we, we cheer for this team, we go to this game and I'm finding ways in the car, but taking captive of what are the places that I share with my son or daughter and how do I take those places and use those times, the car ride on the way to school. I think the best conversations I've been able to have with my kids are when they don't know that I'm trying to have it, when it's in the mundane and when it's in the ordinary of life. I know in terms of how I engage with it uh, as a parent, those have been the most effective for me. One of the ministries uh, I utilize is called Access Ministries. They have this curriculum. It's called One Conversation. And so when you first hear that, you go, oh, I wonder what the one conversation is. No, their point is start the conversation when there were two or three and have one long conversation with them all the way to the time they leave your house. And so that way kids know that they, they really can communicate with their mom and dad. And so I think you're right. I think it's those mundane things that enter into the, our, your lives because if we believe in sanctification, God's going to use that in the students' lives and also going to use it in the parents' lives. Well, thank you, Braxton, for spending time with me. Um, I'm, I'm encouraged by hearing your heart for youth ministry um, because my heart is still there. 
But I want to encourage you just to keep on what you're doing and, and what God has called you to do as well. So thank you. Thanks, it was a joy. Parent You is a ministry of Oak Mountain Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Mark Long, and thanks for listening.